Hello everyone, my dear friends and family, a very warm welcome on the first episode of season two of Being Informal With. Yes, I know it's been so long and thank you so much for uh, waiting for us, to all the viewers, all the people who were waiting for Being Informal With. It's been a long time after the success of season one, of course. We had some wonderful people with us. And uh, now we want to continue the journey again with, yes, few more wonderful people who will be coming to our show in the season two of Being Informal With. Um, just to highlight, uh, it seems that people are wondering uh, where we were for such long time. But um, as all of you know, the last year was... Uh, quite unstable in terms of COVID-19 in India and IYNS was a no exception. So there was a big hit and some ups and downs uh, which kept us away from the public. However, uh, last year was quite fruitful in terms of uh, collaborations. Um, the background task was uh, continued. And I'm happy to announce that IYNS is now in line with the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals and um, we, for, for achieving all these goals, uh, we, are, we have partnered and collaborated with uh, many international and national institutions, I would say. A few examples are like IAEA at either organization and I, in fact, IYNS has been a founding partner of Women in Fusion, which uh, the website launched last week. You can go there and join. And um, in the field of education as well, we have collaborated with uh, so many schools in India now. And some new activities are being launched. So um, this was a quite a brief of view about the collaborations. And last year we participated in COP26 climate uh, conference. And we discussed about the role of youth in, in fighting climate change. Along with that, uh, IVN is, is also the founding partner of International Fusion Education Portal with the uh, ITER organization, along with the so many other organizations, but uh, IVN is only being the being only the youth organization which is participating as the founding member. So yeah, all that happened. Uh, some outreach activities happened, so to say. And uh, so, without further delay, I would like to now proceed with the introduction of our uh, today's chief guest. He's one of the best chemical engineers in India, I would say, and uh, one of the best teachers as well, who I have interacted with, fortunately. And yes, I'm referring to Professor J.B. Joshi, who's presently the Emeritus Professor at Homi Baba National Institute at VNI in Mumbai. So um, let's welcome Professor Joshi and let's begin the special episode, first episode of season two of Being Informal With. Hello everyone once again and today we are fortunate enough to have uh, Professor J.B. Joshi with us as known Professor J.B. Joshi. Uh, I, I don't think he need a big introduction. He, if, if I go for the introduction, it's never ending. I don't have enough words to do so. I'll just give you some of the key dates. Uh, Professor Joshi passed a Bachelor of Engineering in 1971 and Master's in 1972 from then known uh, University Department of Chemical Technology and now very famously known as uh, ICT. Institute of uh, Chemical Technology in Mumbai and after which he started his research and awarded with PhD in 1977 and followed his uh, uh, career as a faculty in UDCT and later on elevated to the 
uh, position of director in 1999. He retired uh, from there in 2009, and after that, he joined Homi Baba Chair Professor at uh, Homi Baba National Institute, HBNI in Mumbai, which is under Department of Atomic Energy. And now he is working as the Professor Emeritus in HBNI. Professor Josie has been awarded uh, with Padam Bhushan for his outstanding contribution, I would say, uh, in the field of science uh, in 2014. And frankly, I was fortunate enough to be there at that point of time. It was a nice, cute celebration we did uh, with him in HBNI. So um, thank you so much, sir, for sparing your time and joining us for this wonderful session of season one. Oh, sorry, season two, episode one of uh, Being Informal with. Pleasure, sir. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. And as I always say, there's no story complete without the anecdotes from friends and family. And to say, to share their version of nostalgic stories about Professor Joshi, we have uh, today uh, his one of one of his friend and colleague from Marathi Vigyan Parishad. He's leading science communicator in Maharashtra. And he's uh, also the secretary of um, Marathi Vigyan Parishad. We have uh, Shri Anant uh, P. Deshpande with us. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you for joining with us. So uh, without further delay, I would start to, I'll begin rather simply. Uh, sir, as, as I know, or as I have learned so far that any country's uh, growth or development basically depends on uh, on its on the performance of its industries, the GDP or whatever key performance indicators you say they all are related to how the industry is functioning, how efficient it is, and you have contributed a lot, or I would say you have rather improved a lot uh, this efficiency and performances of several industrial houses in the country. I would say which have revolutionized the industrial development of country in during that time when it was really needed. Uh, so how this happened, if you can just uh, give us some insights, uh, what were the key challenges you uh, saw and how, how you changed this entire scenario, I would say. Over to you, sir. Thank you. It depends upon the scientific temper of the society. Whatever advanced countries you see, uh, the per capita income is directly proportional to number of innovations in that country. So, uh, the performance of industry in that particular nation is important. But uh, academic excellence, the partnership between industry and academics, these are, these are equally important. The most important point has been the, our industry has not been competitive throughout the world. Our cost of production is high and therefore uh, we keep on importing a huge quantity of different materials that is the crude oil or mechanical parts or electrical, electronics, huge quantities we, uh, we, we import. And uh, with the help of science and technology, it is possible to make our industry competitive in the world. So first objective is to make competitive and at least stop the import of that particular category. And then I make it more attractive so that we can even export and that really changes the economic uh, uh, wealth strength of the nation. So this is the uh, very important point. The people are important, but people with innovative ability as are really, really important. And this has been proved again and again by the different nations, and uh, we will also go in the similar path. Help the industries in developing in, in, in the direction of innovation and follow this sort of uh, approach. I remember you helped them designing new sort of uh, multi-phase reactors and 
that sort of uh, new technologies you you introduce at a large scale so if you can elaborate a bit on that part thank you the important point which i mentioned in the beginning that we need to have innovative scientists innovative students uh, what is required is excellent balance between teaching research and industrial practice so when i became a teacher in 1972 immediately of course i had started research then for my phd but i thought it desirable uh, uh, to work with industry as well so that the problems of industry and the questions asked by the by the students they can be taken up for research whatever new we find in research we can implement in industry whatever we observe in industry and outcome of research we can teach in the class so this way the teaching has been made effective and uh, my teacher professor sharma he uh, has been uh, responsible for uh, in introducing this kind of ambience in the institute uh, that is university then and now ict so uh, which i started liking the students were enjoying my my teaching and therefore i continued for 37 years and after 37 years when i superannuated then next for 13 years again i am enjoying uh, activity is the same that is empower the new generation for taking up challenges and solve them innovatively and economically that has been that has been very very enjoyable thank you sir your your passion in in teaching i have uh, seen by myself as well and you were such a great teacher i would say and it's it's right to mention here that you have uh, got awarded as the maharashtra's uh, state best teacher award in year 2004 and so just just a curiosity i mean uh, you you had this passion of becoming a teacher since early age or it developed during your career time how, how this passion basically developed in you you get thank you sir uh, in its own uh, stepwise manner when i was in 8th 9th 10th standard that is uh, what i remember my classmates used to ask me some queries and uh, then one or two would ask and then uh, a group will assemble in my vcp then i would try to quickly i realize that i am enjoying this uh, it is difficult to believe but uh, even when i am in pensive mode because of some reason if i go to the class and teach for one hour i come out with uh, smiles the there is a poem by wordsworth and i will tell you only two lines when i am in pensive mood i see the daffodils feel the daffodils and i change my mood completely and i'm full with joy so for me the daffodils are the students and i become become enlightened because of the presence of students the way in which explanation is done and i see the faces of students that they have been understanding and they have been asking the right questions i don't think there is any more enjoyable moment than this i started liking this as a as a young man and then slowly uh, i realized that when i completed my exercise but whatever subject i take at that time i was liking mathematics but i have become mathematics teacher but later on uh, it was uh, explained by my then school teachers that you become engineer uh, because of which the society will get benefited you as a scientist will grow as a mathematician or any other scientist but it is important that uh, let us contribute to the society and there engineering scientist and engineering teacher 
I, I I would say we are lucky enough to to have you in 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 this uh, particular role, and I congratulate uh, not only you, but uh, all your students or whosoever has been connected with you for completing this uh, fifty golden years of your teaching profession. I would say, thank you so much, sir, for being there in this role. I'll. I have some more curiosities which I know, so I will connect to them as well. You became scientist, engineer scientist. You became one of the best teachers. Then you are also associated with so many um, NGOs who, which are working uh, in rural development in in areas uh, where we, we we need to have a. Uh, a really a grassroots level development for the people or to the society i would say and you have already mentioned that the innovation is basically one of the root pillar for the developments and it makes a complete sense that you were using the strength of students your uh, innovation techniques to improve the lives in the rural areas uh, through these ngos so just to understand how this journey started how a scientist i mean it, it's it's really interesting to know how a scientist can directly contribute to this aspect so it will be great to listen from you directly if you could share some of the insights with us thank you sir come from a village, a village. Uh, where uh, most of the people were the farming community and majority of them were either blacksmiths or carpenters or goldsmiths. Or, uh, so I was looking at them as a child. I don't know whether I was understanding completely, but uh, the pain, the hard work under which uh, that they were they were contributing i was really feeling that not, not only the men women were, were also working hard right from one till the beginning and uh, uh, i i start feeling that can i contribute something to reduce the drudgery in, in the work uh, and that was hidden in the mind hidden in the mind then when I started working with industry, uh, I started with electrochemical area, then I started with petrochemical area, then pharmaceutical area, then colorants and textiles, uh, and then atomic energy and bioenergy. And, uh, so I, I realized that the basic engineering principles and basic uh, understanding of uh, the laws of conservation and basic laws of rates. This is same everywhere. We can impress people saying that I'm working in this area, that area, that area, and also that area. And uh, uh, however, the science base is not different. You can uh, quickly realize the current status of performance on the basis of scientific approach to the problem that I quickly, quickly realized. Later on, I realized that uh, there are huge number of problems in the society. Uh, and even more important was the solution to the societal problem, the impact was much more. So suppose uh, any industrial activity would enhance the productivity by 2000 crores. So would generate 200,000 crores. But important thing which I mentioned, the science and technology, the engineering, are not different for societal problems. They are also exactly identical. So, uh, I've been taking students for PhD program, and I'm, I've been so happy uh, with the performance of the students. So, uh, after uh, I became 50, I started taking students in solving the societal problems. And the way in which students 
they started approaching to the problem and getting the solution i was i was very happy and and therefore it became my passion that why not have a new generation having the liking for societal problems and that is going to have even more impact more impact on the on the wealth of our nation so two things science and technology and principles of engineering they don't depend from the application from one application to another application and societal problems the gravity is much more than any other problem so it is important having solved the problem it should be implemented in the society and some other principles like social sciences also become important so i am trying to take help of good people and there are plenty good people in our nation in order to uh, approach the problem uh, in the way in which the need arises thank you sir this was actually enlightening we these days we are talking about stem education steam education and at iwn as we call it uh, i steam education you are already following that and it it it's really a fact when we combine the uh science and tech with the social system then it's become something really nice uh after this i have um, if you can highlight mainly how this marathi vigyan parishad the uh, came into you or you came to marathi vigyan parishad and um, how you uh, conducted so many different types of activities when you were there to improve the scientific temperament in people and if you can highlight that sort of activities in your association with marathi vigyan parishad uh, it will be really nice sir. thank you <clears throat> actually marathi vigyan parishad has been there for approximately 56 years and uh, the overall activity uh, of marathi vigyan parishad we can hear from mr ap deshpande who has been backbone of uh, marathi vigyan parishad so he can say and then uh, he may also mention what i have been contributing and then i will supplement that at the, at the end. that may be uh, maybe the approach but uh, whatever you feel Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So I'll invite uh, um, Shri Deshpande ji, who's already here with us. He's the secretary of uh, Marathi Vigyan Parishad, to share some of his views and insights and stories about sir. So Deshpande, sir, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mitendra Singh and Professor J B Doshi. Professor J B Doshi has been teaching in ICT since 1971 till 2009. Uh, although he was doing the research and teaching and solving the problems of the society, his one of the unfulfilled ambitions was to do some social work, and that is how probably he joined Marathi Vidyan Parishad. in the year 2014 so professor doshi has been doing research throughout his career and he felt that in the objectives of marathi vidyan parishad one of the last objective is to do research and help to carry out the research and which was not done until then although institution was 48 years old by 2014 so he was thinking how to do it he had lot many social problems uh, and then uh, marathi vigyan parishad is not like ict which is purely an education institution so we cannot take students uh, for research uh, uh, doing phd and all that so he found out a way and he discussed with the then director of ict and whether the students can get registered at ict and carried the work at marathi vigyan parishad and that was accepted by the director uh, and then we had one mou with them 
and under that students started getting registered and doing work in marathi vigyan parishad one of the early students was one mr rohan oak and then how to increase the productivity at the farm level by taking a crop of soya bean and then he he uh, did use the waste material from the farm made a biochar out of it and using it more or less like a fertilizer and then he showed it that 25 to 30 percent productivity can be increased in case of soybean so that was one of the successes and then solar energy is one of his pet subjects students started working on that also that was one thing second thing what he did uh, he is having a passion of seeing the dramas and movies and all that uh, and uh, especially in maharashtra and bengal you find that people are in love of drama so how to use that particular thing so he said that science can be propagated through the drama and so one act plays based on the difficulty different scientists have faced while carrying out their research like could be edison could be pasteur could be darwin and like that so uh, that competition was started in the year 2015 and not only the difficulties faced by researchers but also uh, whatever is explained in the science fiction stories whether that can help to develop the uh, one act plays and that is how we started this particular competition in the year 2015 and uh, we got a support from the government of maharashtra from one of the uh, newspapers like maharashtra times uh, and uh, with the help of these three organizations we started getting entries from throughout the state and uh, we got as high as 62 entries from the state at two levels one level was uh, up to the uh, school level say 12th standard and then college students beyond 12th and uh, any grown up people also who are not in the colleges or universities etc but having a passion of drama started getting participated and then it has become very successful uh, activity uh, one of the uh, one act plays was uh, played a uh, broadcast by television duradarshan recently so that is how it gaining the popularity that was the second activity third activity and uh, nitendra singh as you know that in our schools most of the schools they don't have laboratory and the teachers they carry out three or four experiments throughout the year and students have to observe that and then study science so this is not the way science is to be uh, taught so uh, we have to carry out the experiments and so what we did that we started appealing the college students of the first or second year and then taught them the experiments that are covered in the curriculum of the schools between 8th and 9th between 8 9 10 standards etc then we gave them uh, science kits one kit per two students and requested them to go to the schools the first experiment was carried out at nasik municipal schools then subsequently it started getting spread uh, throughout the state and uh, these students they used to go generally on saturdays in the schools request the headmaster for 2 hours and then about 30 to 40 students used to get gathered they will carry out the experiments they will ask the students also to carry out the experiments and uh, amazingly the municipal schools at nasik found that the presentee on those days is 100% and the headmasters they were amazed they said that on other days we don't get more than 50% how what magic you played so uh, the answer was that if you carry out the experiment the students get attracted they themselves carry out at their homes also and they understand the subject not only that the school students they understood the subject but then the college students 11 12 also did not carry out any experiments in the school and so while they were carrying out the students were asking number of questions which these uh, college students were unable to explain but then they were very honest they said that next time we'll give you answer so they went back home they studied all those things and then answered next time so this is 
a dual way of education that the trainer and the trainee both of them they get educated in this we call it shaniwari vidyanwari because on saturday shaniwar these experiments are carried out and then just prior to corona in the year 2019 20 uh, year as many as 500 schools were covered up uh, in all the districts of the state so this was another one so likewise professor joshi he started uh, one more thing he found that even in uh, the university colleges and universities in india the research is not going on uh, not only by students but by professors themselves and if the professors they do the research then it will get uh, carried out by the students students will understand then that my professor is doing why i not and uh, in other countries it happens so uh, that is why those countries are progressing so he started one uh, award scheme in the name of his guru professor mm M. sharma and then the award of 1 lakh of rupees to the best research research to a college professor and another award for the best professor doing research in the university and this particular system also started from 2016 now 6 years and then we found amazingly that the good research is also being carried out in the mofisil area so we always say that mumbai pune nagpur etc they do good research now it is not so it is ahmednagar it could be yavatmal it could be ratnagiri anything small cities small villages also uh, there are umpteen number of colleges and professors and those professors they get attracted to this particular thing and they are carrying out the research so there are so many schemes that professor joshi wants to bring in the uh, ngo and carry them out and i think uh, he is more happy by seeing the results of that this is additional dimension to his teaching research and solving the problems of the industry thank you thank you so much uh, it, it, it's uh, it's really awe inspiring to to hear all of that and we we always uh, say this that connected learning is also the part of new education policy in India, but this is the real example of uh, connected learning. And you have rightly mentioned, talent is never limited to metro cities. Y you can find it everywhere. And we, we see the many talents are coming mainly from uh, rural areas and small towns. So thank you so much for highlighting this part. Uh, Josie, sir, over to you. If you want to compliment, I would be glad to hear it from you as well. Thank you. Thanks to Mr. Deshpande because he has been with the Parishad for more than 40 years and he knows uh, the uh, entire inner and outer uh, circles of society and how to penetrate uh, the science in the society. Uh, now, one thing which I have been saying, that is the student community has been very good. And uh, I also emphasize that whether to solve a problem of faced by industry or problem just by curiosity, you want to solve by curiosity, or problem of the society, the enrichment of a person as a scientist is, is possible in all the cases. I think depending upon the nature of the student, he should pick up one of these, uh, these areas. And uh, in ICT, uh, it is possible that uh, the aspirants are plenty and we are able to identify those who can do good society research, those who can do good industrial research, and those who are introverts and they would like to solve some of the uh, some of the problems to advance the science. The first two are application of science, and the first, the third one is uh, the advancement of science. So, while implementing any outcome, 
because identifying the problem, important step, finding the solution to the problem, and solution means every problem has a solution, but it has to be simple, it has to be economical, and uh, the technology should be implementable in villages, and uh, it should create job opportunities, and, and, and these points are there. But for the overall success, it is very, very important that uh, success is never by a single person. The entire team is very important. Suppose I take industrial problem, then the industrialist cannot tell the problem and go away from the problem. His, his involvement, then senior management, the middle management, the junior management, people on the floor level, so, as a scientist or those who want that the solutions of the problem should see light of the day, I think they should shed out uh, completely uh, about the gains from this. Uh, if I think of gains and uh, uh, you can say uh, the society can give many honors and awards, but if I do for that, then success will never come. So making friends on the floor, making friends with junior uh, management and uh, uh, including the owner, if that environment can be done, and owners are happy to do that if they are convinced that this is going to result into extra profits. Right? And from these extra profits, I request them to support the PhD research for societal benefit. I, I easily can support 10 PhD students, 15 PhD students entirely from this activity. And now there are about 12 PhD students working on a variety of societal problems. There are large number of students working on industrial problems and in general to understand the multi-phase phenomena and turbulence phenomena in industrial reactors. So that is also happening. So the key feature which I told you is the make a team and make a team in such a way that nobody aspires for any gain. And suppose I myself start aspiring for the gain because I'm the inventor and uh, without me the no, no solution would have come. If I start behaving that way, then that is the end of the story, right? Right there itself. Second problem wouldn't come to you, third problem wouldn't come. So if you don't want problem, then that is good. With one problem you can enjoy. But if you want to make as a part of your blood throughout your career, then I think it is important that the problems should be solved in a continuous manner and they should be implemented also in a continuous manner. Thank you, sir. You, you have rightly mentioned this is the culture you develop. And as far as I know, you uh, always gave back even the consultancy money to the institution for its improvement, uh, which is amazing. And I, I think that's how the culture is, is developing even now. And you have, I mean, almost... Uh, uh, over 80 students have completed uh, PhD under your guidance. How do you manage uh, all of this? In, in and, and, and I know the topics are quite different. Uh, each one of them was completing. So how, how this happened? If yeah. you can just, and of course you have uh, more than 500 publications as well, which is commendable. Congratulations for that as well. But uh, it, it is really nice to learn how you manage your time and how you manage all these resources with the students and interactions. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, as I told earlier uh, in this discussion, the basics of science and technology are the same. So I have students in bioenergy, solar energy, atomic energy, multiphase reactors of different types are together stirred tanks and fluidized beds and, and all of them I'm, I'm analyzing and I've been able to see what is the most important here. Most important is to grow the students. Right. 
make them take the pill. That is most important. All other things are unimportant. Now, if we wish to make them capable, it doesn't, it should not matter whether they work in atomic energy or societal problems. Okay? They learn the principles and they also learn how to go to the society, how to go to the industry and uh, implement the solution of the problem. So the students getting the overall balance training and they becoming capable to solve the additional problems of the society, that is the starting point. The different subjects, right, or uh, number of papers, or number of PhD students, this happens because of the uh, original passion. That is, that is, I, I would like to go more, more than 100, more than 150. So that is just a number. But uh, one thing which I have liked, enjoyed, is no student has uh, deceived me in terms of the uh, gain of the experience of any type. No one, no one. I'm very happy with young generation and they deliver whatever is wanted. And uh, their enthusiasm and their energy, it uh, really energizes me to continue. Uh, I don't know how many years, but really it doesn't matter. And till the basic objective of uh, uh, of making the student community capable. Uh, now my first student is also exceeding 65 years. So, and now the fresh student will be completing whatever is the age group. So the age group with which I am dealing with, that doesn't change. That, that is the same. And uh, if it is a long distance travel, stay, and doing experiments on 200 grams, 5 kilos, 5 tons, 50 tons, they do all well. They don't complain that, sir, this is difficult. They may have some difficulty in terms of understanding, which they are, of course, I'm a teacher and they are, um, they have a right to ask the questions to them. But nobody complains that, sir, why are you telling to uh, handle 50 tons of fruits at the same time? and how to preserve them, how to add value. This is what the innovation means. And all uh, the students, the new four students are uh, graduating this year. And all of them, they, they are from solar energy. They are from uh, uh, addition to the wealth of uh, the farming community in villages. So there are, there are problems, but the basic principle and basic enjoyment, source of enjoyment, I told you. And all the numbers really come out. So suppose a student has to solve the problem, but also needs to write, make a report, so that he himself after, or she herself, after five years or 10 years would, would understand. Therefore, they write paper. So if they, you have more than 100, 100 students, each one writes four or five papers, we get you get more than 100 theses. But those five papers, very, very important is they should be capable of writing. When they write the first manuscript, most of the time it is more or less rewritten. And uh, I do corrections in red pen, and you will see the entire manuscript has become red. But the second paper, the third paper, fourth paper, when they start writing fifth paper, Whatever comment I have written in red, the student, they, uh, they, they react to me saying that, sir, I don't agree with you. Then that is the time to graduate the student, let him get the PhD. He started arguing means he has exceeded the requirement with which we started. And this way, the number, any number uh, is, is possible. But the focus, the entire focus, I told you, and that will never change. I'm 73. I don't know how many years, but all the years, the focus will continue. Many more years to come, sir. They, and apart from these direct students you have been dealing with, there are many others like me who, being surrounded uh, in, in the vicinity, get inspired. So it's, it's, it's an amazing to 
to see the, that sort of passion, I would say. And I think that's why you are one of the best teachers uh, I have ever seen so far. Uh, moving on, I have one quick question which is coming always out of curiosity. As you have mentioned there, you, you came from a village, a uh, small town, and then uh, reaching to such a high positions in, in, in career. So um, how, how you will put it in, in words for the other students who are living in those areas and who always feel it's very difficult to do something like this? So how was your journey and how it was challenging and how you overcome those challenges to reach here? These small uh, villages are characterized by simplicity and good uh, weather and good atmosphere and a lot of greenery and uh, so uh, I don't know whether some uh, background is required for creativity. I don't think so. But uh, these are the characteristic features of villages. Everybody knows everybody in the village. Uh, so when I came to Mumbai, and particularly to UDCT in 1967, there was uh, our uh, premises are about 16 acres and full of greenery, full of greenery. And uh, I was wearing pajamas and sometimes khaki pajamas. And, but all my classmates, two of them, three of them were coming from very rich family. For there was a separate driver and separate car for them, and I was come, coming by walking about two miles. But the way in which they were behaving in the classroom, so the ambience of university as well as the uh, simplicity in the classroom, that there was no differentiation between the front sitting student and back sitting student. All of there, there was a uh, you can say oneness. Oneness. We would eat together. They would share, share their food. I would share my food. And they were not minding. So this particular ambience of unicity, I think the best characteristic feature is these relationships. Now the more than 50, 51 years are over. But those uh, rich students and not so rich students and poor students, the relationship has been very intact. The point I was arriving at was, there was no step change from village to the city. I was not exposed to the city atmosphere, except perhaps the crossing big roads, and that, that must be the uh, hindrance at the beginning. Then maybe I would have learned in one year that how to cross the road. But other than outside these experiences, then uh, it was very, has been very smooth. And uh, the research area, where creativity is important, let it be poets or sculptors or painters or, 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 or singers. So what is required is ambience. And in villages, the creative ambience is there. And in, in my institution, the characteristic feature is there is an excellent ambience. And you remain in that ambience, you can more or less say that I have been within that ambience and uh, exposure to the society in terms of uh, getting acquainted with their problems of industry and industry people. It has been within the framework of problems and solving the problems together. So for me, there has been no difference between industry, society, village and UDCT. It has been all identical where ambience has has been the same, either it is created by me or created by the society. It has been a very, very enjoyable, creative ambience. Or let it be Marathi Vidyan Parishad. That has been a major contributor in the recent past. And uh, as, as a president, it is very important for me that is the, the right ambience should be created. There are, whenever there is a group together, then there are challenges. So, so bringing these challenges to a minimum number and moving forward, 
the basics of the institute, if those are defined, then nobody is important. No president is important or no uh, worker is important. The objective is important. And when we understand that, then really, whether you are from village or industry or whether you are rich or poor, as I told you uh, earlier, everything dissolves in the overall objective of that organization. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, I can sense the way you are putting uh, the importance of objective uh, in the sense as it is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. And I know you are uh, a very big philosopher of, uh, I mean, uh, you, you follow the philosophy of uh, Krishna and Bhagavad Gita. Uh, could you please highlight that part as well? You being a logical engineer brain and following the philosophy of uh, Gita, which is also a quite logical, as I feel, and to bring out something special for the society using all this together. You have already done that, I, I, I would say, then if you could uh, share some of the experience of this aspect as well with us. Thank you, sir. All right. See, uh, when you are with the institute, with the students, with uh, society of the villages or of the cities or industry people or the organization with uh, uh, we are living in the real world we cannot pose that i am a great man and now everybody should respect and i will order something and everybody should understand it is uh, it is never that way and it cannot be and it should not be so whenever person-to-person -person interactions are there, there can be, there can be uh, good outcome, there can be periods of, uh, uh, periods of tension. Now, if you are doing teaching, research, industry, society, all of them together, then the number of occasions where interactions, such interactions are there, and everywhere money is also required, and you need to deal with a large number of people, then Gita becomes important. That is, uh, if one can uh, introspect every week that what am I, and what is that I have been able to contribute in the last week, uh, and uh, that introspection has to be honest. If it is not honest, then energy vanishes. So, the after introspection, see uh, in our uh, instruments, there is a zero error. So, you may bring the need to bring the needle at zero. Then only if it is a weighing balance, if already the needle is at 10 and if you weigh 70, then it will show 80, right? So every week, if you bring yourself, your needle to zero, then there is an ample driving force for doing good things. And uh, the zero really means the all the situations, impossible, I would not say unpleasant, because these are natural, all of these are natural. So to deal such occasions, According to me, there are nothing like pleasurable occasions and uh, tenseful occasions. The occasions are occasions. And money is required means money is required. There is none. So getting the money and while getting the money, there are difficulties. But we need to assume that there will be difficulties. Now, the uh, I gave, gave my own money. This is because I have personal experience that if I get give myself X money, then I can ask for 20X. If I don't give, give mine, then zero multiplied by 20, I get zero from the, from the society. Right? Therefore, I have been given, giving the money. So coming back to Gita, putting your needle at zero on the time is possible. There, are, there is Gita which is uh, available in different forms. Critics, uh, critics have been written by a variety of people, and I have been reading uh, 
रिस्पेक्टेड विनोबा भावे जीज गीता वर्षन एंड दिस बिकम्स क्विकली पॉसिबल विद इन सेवरल मिनिट्स वन कैन गो बैक टू जीरो एंड एंजॉय द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ इनफाइनाइट ड्राइविंग फोर्स विच बिकम्स अवेलेबल दैट पर्टिक्युलर मॉमेंट रियली डिजॉल्व ऑल द प्रायर ऑल काइंड ऑफ एक्सपीरियंसेस good experiences are made to zero needle zero and the not so good experiences they are also brought to zero and it is a new beginning new week to to happen so that is how the gita has been useful i definitely tell all my students to do uh, the pranayam as well as uh, meditation as well as i teach everybody uh, and uh, when i meet the new student i tell him that i guarantee you phd i guarantee you four five papers i guarantee you the job also but our association should result into you becoming proud as an engineer and you becoming resourceful you becoming capable as an engineer that is going to be our objective right. so and for that the problems is the will be the everyday occurrence if you don't face any difficulty in a day it means that you are not working so if you are working there will be expect the problem and in the evening if you realize that there were four five problems you should uh, be very happy and go to sleep if there was no problem then you should think really what happened in the day so making students ready for possible problems this uh, this particular uh, capability injection of capability in students is very very important because we are likely to get deviated or uh, uh, you, you can say demoralized also because of some occurrences this is not happening that is not happening because of something that person is not so good and uh, we we'll lose lot of energy and time and money in uh, in small small incidences so here the gita is useful to be away from all these and remain creative which is most enjoyable thank you so much sir this is this is i would say one of the simplest uh, explanation about uh, uh, philosophy of gita i have ever heard it, it's really nice and as you mentioned you you ask your student for the pranayama and meditation i i know you love tracking as well so you encourage them for the tracking as well or you to share some of the tracks with them still yeah 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 i go this two three years i was i have not been able to go see there are uh, uh, various aspects in uh, in tracking one is uh, some students are outgoing but some students are reserved right and uh, in tracking the uh, hills or uh, the rivers they don't recognize who is teacher and who is student they they treat everybody the same and therefore the interaction increases all the resistances i would not say they would go to zero but it opens up at least it opens up and uh, uh there are many many uh, many many objectives this i told you as one but uh, maybe the last two years ago three years ago we had gone to north maharashtra and uh, we interacted with local people we uh, went to the hills and the people living there they had some function of dancing we mixed with them we also danced along with them but because of that we could make good relationships with the local people and next day when we wanted to understand what is that they are facing as a difficulty then there was openness complete openness because we danced earlier with, with them and the dances are so simple the only thing is enjoy that is that is important what is do you do with hands and legs is not important be be one along with them so this way and students really collected five such good problems excellent problems 
Yeah, and then we came back. Actually, the problems faced by the society are so many. The uh, there has to be at least one thousand centers like my center in order to address these problems. But I'm 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 some somehow internally confident that this overall culture will improve day by day, and one day there will be the number of <coughs> problem solvers and implementers will be the same as the problems generated in the society, or it may even exceed. So, uh, because I don't believe that certain person is more capable than the other. All are capable. Only the strengths are different. But all the strengths put together, the summation is exactly identical. Right? So, I, I say this with uh, a humor that uh, backbenchers in my class are. I have been teaching for 50 years. The backbenchers they have started the business, whereas the front front bench front sitters they have become excellent professors. But can we say that the industrial is superior to professor or professor is superior to? So all are capable, all are contributing, all are enjoying, all are creating. So in one case, the strengths required are different. In another case, the strengths are different. But the number of strengths are never different from each other. The summation is the same. It is, I, I tell my students, try to recognize your strength. Nobody looks at your height and weight and color of the hair and your own color and whether you had a first class or second class. Nobody looks at you. Are you, are you creative? Are you happy? Are you making the atmosphere happy? That is what is important. For the society it is important, but for yourself itself is very important. That's completely <laughs> true, sir. So before we go to our final session and final question, I have one, one particular question. Uh, uh, because you being associated with the Department of Atomic Energy now. Uh, I, I always uh, see that we need a lot of uh, energy independence and now even every country is uh, looking for that. And nuclear plays a key role in getting that low carbon energy independence. So how you felt when working with DA that uh, what are the challenges uh, which could be overcome with some certain sort of a uh, innovation or new techniques or um, any new format which you could share with your experience with us. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think most important point is uh, our capabilities in atomic uh, energy are uh, very much in advanced stage. Uh, but we have a lot of resources for bioenergy as well as solar energy. And uh, the low carbon footprint will come from right balance from solar energy, the bioenergy, and the atomic energy. Uh, however, there are challenges in terms of, uh, for money, there are always challenges. But uh, making bioenergy and solar energy more economical, and there are several opportunities which should be come. So atomic energy has come to a stage where implementation is possible. Some improvements are always can be, can be taken up and one can go, but the capabilities in our nation are more or less sufficient for, for the spreading of atomic energy. But in addition to atomic energy, <coughs> our nation is rich in terms of solar energy and bioenergy. And uh, with right research, I'm convinced that the five, five to 6% of the Indian land is sufficient for providing energy for the entire nation. And we can, uh, we can have the, the right balance of carbon capture, the rates of photosynthesis, and converting the waste biomass to energy. Uh, this week complete the loop, 
that itself is also capable of fulfilling the needs of the energy and exporting the energy. So solar energy, atomic energy, and the conventional ways, I think they will go out of the date uh, as soon as the coal power plant gets retired. I don't think they will get renewable because of their carbon dioxide footprint. So if they are getting retired, we should have an alternate solution. So right now, good alternate solution with confidence and science and technology backup is atomic energy just now. They can easily uh, replace the uh, thermal power stations into atomic power stations. I, I think that is one of the brilliant solutions we have and we, we all need it. And as the climate change is uh, going as a global concern these days and co-joined with the energy independence we need, uh, as we, we, we all know as a developing nation, it is one of the requirement. Uh, how do you perceive, sir, that how youth can directly contribute to it, how, how they should uh, train themselves to be a part of the solution. That would be really encouraging for the youngsters to, to come. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, the whatever problems with which the new generation has started dealing with because of uh, certain situation of placement or uh, the opportunities become available, the student gets placed. My important, uh, most important advice will be the time balance and energy balance. We learn in engineering and we need to apply in everyday life. My conviction is there that whatever I do for the society is much less than what society has done for me. Right? So whatever has been given by society, I make a list of that. And if I make another list of whatever I have, I repair back to the society, make as a separate list. One can always take it for granted that everybody is benefited by the society much more than what one can do in one lifetime. If that is the case and the equation, the balance, the balance has to be satisfied, then one should look at this equation. Your family members, your parents, your brothers, sisters, your teachers, your, uh, uh, your colleagues, your friends, they all, all have contributed, your institutions have come contributed. So what is that we can do? Always, whenever you have a weekend, then I said that let us have honest introspection. What is that am I doing? So I always uh, appeal to the student community that take a separate diary and every half an hour make an entry that is what is that you have done exactly. Was it something creative? Or you spend that time in anxiety? Or uh, you spend that time in uh, just uh, repenting upon whatever happened in the past. This uh, time efficiency, uh, I have told my, my own students several times, and it is, it is much, much less than 10%. And they quickly realize that what are the time spans where they were inactive, are not so creative, not so creative. So this is my very, very important, uh, very, very important appeal that try to make your time balance as positive. If it is 20%, then you will be really enjoying your life. You will be enjoying uh, your family members. Right? And nobody needs to appreciate you. You yourself, so you will get enjoyment from within that uh, nothing else is required from outside. So this time balance, the societal balance, that is, uh, did you, we complain to the mother that this is not good, that is not good, and do, do not speak in the right tone of language with the mother. So at least once in a month, can we say thank you to the mother, thank you to the father, 
It doesn't happen because we forget, we take for granted whatever society has given. Can you say thank you to the teacher? Especially go once in a once in a year. Yeah, because we have we have gained, gained from the teachers. I have gained from my teacher. So say thanks to parents, brothers, sisters, and to the there are in addition to profession, there are many, many beautiful things in this world. The forests are beautiful, rivers are beautiful, lakes are beautiful, mountains are beautiful, Himalaya is beautiful, the ocean is beautiful. Are we worrying about only profession or only life and forgetting about these, all, these, all these beauties? All these friendship relations and particularly relationship with the parents is also very beautiful and enjoyable. You smile and add to the enjoyment of parents, the entire family will keep on shaking with a lot of joy. Right? So it is, it is very important to understand how we are spending our energy, how we are spending our time, and how we are uh, satisfying the balance of society and yourself. This is very important according to me. Thank you so much, sir. This is, uh, this is really a fact. I, I, I always felt that there's no one, as you have rightly said, there's no one who's made uh, only by himself. It's always people around who contribute to make you whatever you are and we always should uh, keep this in mind and say thanks or at least feel if you can't say but this is really important uh, this pandit sir wants to add something to it sorry sir please yeah yeah can you unmute me yeah it, uh, you you are unmute sir please go ahead thank you I, I want to add uh, whatever I have said earlier. Uh, Professor Joshi is very generous. The money that he earns, like the philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi, that the money that you have, surplus money, you are a trustee of it, and you should spend it for the society. And so, whenever he delivers lectures and he gets the honorarium, that honorarium, he gives it to Marathi Vidyan Parishyas. And uh, for his felicitation at the age of 70 and all that, the donations that industries gave, he made an endowment of that money, about 2 crores of rupees, Marathi Vidyan Parishad, for their activities. That is number one. And number two, that the PhD students who are working at Marathi Vidyan Parishad, they get the uh, scholarship or whatever, I don't know uh, the exact word, at the scale of UGC and that particular money again maybe during past six to seven years equal to two crores of rupees he has earned from the industry and he is spending on those students. Now he doesn't gain anything uh, by uh, giving that money to those students and all that uh, but those students they can do their PAD pursue and all that so uh, and recently through his acquaintance, we are going to get a very sumptuous donation from America also. So, so this is the way his generosity is helping for our NGO, Marathi Vidyan Parishad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, both of you. I, I don't know what to say. I don't have enough words to to add i mean this is a this is an amazing experience to hear it from you sir it's a it's a pleasure to uh, hear these stories and this is amazing frankly uh, i i can continue listening to this uh, i don't know until when but uh, i don't want to take a lot of time for, from your busy schedule. So as a legacy uh, we have at uh, Beacon Formal with, I would uh, request you if you could uh, nominate uh, three guests for our future episodes uh, whose story you feel should be uh, interesting and motivating for our viewers. It will be amazing. So if you could uh, do that, sir, it will be great. Thank you. Yeah. I will pass on to someone. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.
um before i close uh, anything you would like to say or share with us uh, sir please yeah the uh, i i w- wish to continue with the passion which i have explained and emphasized also so in years to come uh i don't know how many years but uh, the teaching hearing that it is a nobel profession but now i have realized also that it is a nobel profession and i would like to follow that path and be with young minds on the time the age group of 18 to 25 no matter even if i become 80 or 85 and uh, and uh, i'm 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 enjoying all the beautiful aspects of the nature of the people and uh, uh, i i i don't have sufficient words to thank the nature on one side it is giving sufficient number of problems and also telling every scientist that you are at the level of zero on the time that the nature is so so meaningful you bringing out the meaning out of the nature is at the scale of zero again you keep on working for 30 35 years say that you have published 500 papers 600 papers but as far as the total nature is concerned whatever gita says is correct you go back to zero and they, then you enjoy the world profusely thank you so much sir for these wonderful words uh, now this brings us uh, towards the end of our today's conversation but i would say this is just a beginning and before closing i have some announcements to make uh, of course uh, we have been seen as uh, being sleeping for long now so you get all these uh, details whatever we were doing for this past year in our newsletter which will be available tomorrow so on our website and it will be shared on all social media as well so please go through and you'll find all the updates about uh, the past activities and upcoming activities of uh, this year and with this uh, i would like to thank you sir uh, professor josi for uh, being with us and sparing uh, his inspiring journey sorry sparing his uh, time and sharing his inspiring journey with us professor uh, sorry mr des pande for taking his own time and sharing the experiences with professor joshi and activities of uh, marathi vigyan parishad and to all our viewers uh, who were eagerly waiting for this show to come back thank you so much and the entire team of being informal with at uh, IYNS who has been working day and night to make it happen so thank you so much to all of you i wish you thank you it's a pleasure sir and have a nice day stay safe take care and stay tuned for more such interesting stories with us thank you and feel free to visit uh, iyns.in for for updates thank you